Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. So this is a woods tutorial. Ooh. And uh, for the purpose of this woods tutorial, uh, we got a resin well from Wufu Workshop. That looks really cool. That um, It's nice, isn't it? Well, it's a nice little piece of scenery, isn't it? To be able to include on your board. It is, it's, and it wasn't many pieces, so it was easy to assemble. There wasn't much cleaning that needed to be done with it. Um, so pretty much just went straight to the black primer, which is which is which is nice. And you know, it was a nice little project for one for one day. So there we are. Um, you want you you like these sorts of little things, don't you? Yeah, I, I it's just nice break from. Um, oh, and here's all the colours. Uh, if at any point you want to catch the colours that we used, uh, feel free to pause it or slow the video down. It, essentially, it's a load of dark browns, dark greens, going to lighter browns, lighter greens, and then to creams and whites. So, there are all the colours there for you. Juicy colours. All the options. All the lovely options. And, and you can go in millions of different ways with this. I could have done the rocks grey, I could have done completely different wood. You know, you could do like purple heart wood, you could do like, I mean because it's a fancy world, you could do the, you could do the wood any colour, you could do it blue. Uh, you could do like birch tree wood, you could do like oak. Um, but you like doing more realistic woods, don't you? Well, I, I, yeah, I do, I do woods that I'm used to seeing. Um, but uh, you know, it's, uh, the the world is your oyster. With, with what colours you pick for these things. So what we're doing here is we're starting with uh, wet blending by putting all the dark wood down, all the dark browns down first, and then I mix a load of other sort of orangey browns and cream colours into it and greens as well. Is the areas where they where it's green is sort of like going to be later used as a that's where the moss is going. So it gives it sort of greeny undertone, which is kind of nice. Um, and you know I'll, I'll, I'll work my way around the lid uh, and, and the thing is the detail is so nicely done on this that uh, you can very easily use the side of your brush to catch all the grain and highlight it all uh, we're doing a sort of old sort of iron uh, handles for it so mixing in some browns with the blues on that so it's an it's an old piece of wood where it's, 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 been, it's been used. It's been used many times. It's yeah. been sat there for many many years. Probably not cared for all that well. Um, it might have been nice when it was originally created, but now it's very sort of aged oh, and mossy. Oh, that well, 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 well. Yes, yes. There you go, guys. We are on Facebook as well. Jimmy the Brush. That's there. All the alerts. Um, so yeah, so so in some of the games in Warhammer, these wells are used as objectives. One team has to defend them; the other team has to poison them. Yes, yeah, so they 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 do do make a good objective markers on the and board. And for stories and for D and D as well, yeah, it's the same yeah. sort of thing that you could use it for. It could be uh, it could be that this is the the fountain of youth, and uh, no one knows about it. Um, so you're doing the a little bit of edging, a bit of cream over yeah. it. Yeah, I didn't want to a go too, too bright with it too soon. There's a lot of... I, I've put this white shine on it where I decide where the sort of dents and bounces of lights are going to be. So if, if you hammer metal, it puts some flats on it and sometimes the light bounces off that. That's essentially what I'm creating there and then after, and I'm putting the edging on. But then after that, I'll go over it and I'll smooth it all in to um, make it look a bit more natural. So there you go, you see, it looks like it's been weathered and... You don't have to do much no. work around it, it's no. just it's just a lot of wet blending. All the wet blending, wet blending is life. And there you go, it, look, it, looks, it looks worn, it looks steely and non-metallic and... Uh, yes. All, all nice and good. That looks really nice. So sometimes I'll do the same with the rivets. There's a few rivets and nails in the wood. And sometimes I'll do them very dark with blues and browns and other times I'll do them very highlighted as if they're fresh rivets, fresh stuff, fresh nails. Um, this is catching the edge of the grain there. You can see how easy how, how, how easy it is and how deep the grain is and 
nice to nice to work with it does make a, a lot of difference when the sculpt is nice yeah. and you can use just the side of your brush to uh to to catch those details and it's just nice and easy but when you find someone who does good 3d prints and they take a lot of a lot of care to um you know give you those details to fine tune it so you can see it all so you yeah. can enjoy yourself as a painter so that's what i like using the wufu workshop um and then here we're doing the rafters on the underneath the the roof now you don't really see these but i wanted to paint them anyway and the, the, the there wasn't grains on this but i decided to put grains in there's there's grains on the sides but there's not grains going through these main rafters in the middle so i mean they could have been polished quite quite well and you know we don't know but but, know. but 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 um Either way, I, it, you know, it, it, this is this is a good video for turning something into wood, even if it doesn't look like wood. Yeah, sometimes you have to paint on the uh, the, the wood grains. Yeah, the, which is what I do here. I put a lighter brown going down it, and and the lines don't even have to be straight. No, it's even better when they are crooked just and crooked wavy, and messy, yeah. and you know that that gives you a lot more realistic look to it all. So long as you leave the darkness there then uh, around your lines then you're all good i think this is my problem usually that i don't leave enough darkness around yeah. the wood so i'm i'm learning with you guys i'm learning with you okay so well what i've done there is i've i've, I've sketched it out with a sort of orangey brown and now i'm going over with a cream and you could do this the opposite way around as well if you wanted to do dark lines on a light wood um, but it's nice to have that sort of mid-tone there to tie it all together and then to show extra wear and tear around the rib because people would be taking it off leaving it on the floor and then throwing it back on again yeah it would I've, be I've, bouncing around yeah it, the, the wood would be sort of um, dented and it whitened by it all so I've, I've, that's when I go over with a, a brush and throw more Zandri dust around the edges and then now we get to the roof tiles. Now these could have been red, which would have been a bit more traditional, and a lot of people paint them red. But I'm, I, I had a th um, an Empire army that was green, so I decided to go with green to begin with. Even though since since starting this, I've changed the colour of my troops and gone purple. Um, it's still quite nice to, to just pick a colour and go with it because they could be any colours. They could be slate, grey, blue, they could have been um, red brick yeah. tiles. Uh, and then again, with the wood here, doing the same thing as always, throwing down the dark brown first, then throwing on oranges and creams to, to break it up and make it look more natural. You know, it's not flat colour anywhere on this and uh, that makes it look a lot more organic. And here's, here's a few clips of the, the finished piece thrown in. We do a bit of edging with the tiles, and as you can see, the, it's it's really nice the detail on these tiles. I think that green looks really really nice. It is nice. It's isn't it's it? it's just nice to see a slightly different color than you know normally we would go for you know the browns, the reds, the yeah, the safe sort of, colors. It, it's 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 si kind of it's kind of natural to go to those colors, mm -hmm. but it does look. You know quite nice and green well i think well. if you're building a city and the city's got a theme to it then it's good to sort of go with that so this could end up being yours for your living city yes and i might do another one that's purple or pink for my um mages free guild city um and here and, and here because the the light green is really strong really quite sharp and a bit obnoxious in places and the dark green is is really nice. I decided to throw in some some other colours to to match it all up. So that I put a mid tone green in, and then I threw a bit of brown around the tiles as well later to make it look more, more weathered and used. And again, put in the even though there's um, grain already put on there, we you know I'm putting my own grain on there as well and sort of bringing out the grain that's already there to make it look a bit better. And uh, it was all nice to do. She's all nice, really nice in the knot on the left side there. That looks really cool. Yeah. This is it, it was a nice piece to work on, and it only took a few hours, so it's it's a it's a nice little um, project for any artist. 
Um, so stonework, good to look at pictures. Uh, like if you do a Google search for mossy rocks, mossy buildings, um, gives you a bit of an idea of the sort of the way things like this would look because they're in contact with a lot of water, There's a lot of moisture around this sort of thing. Uh, so the wood would be a bit rotten. The stone would have a bit of green growing through it. And the bucket there would be... I mean, this could be fresh. You could do this as like a new installment. But... Um, Most it, likely it will be quite worn out, you know, after well, all yeah, the wars I think, I and think, things. I and... think, you know, a lot of people stand on those stones so that you'd see a lot of wear and, and smoothness on the rocks. Uh, but there's so many ways that you could take this. You could have, uh, you know, with, with, with me going with like a, a flagstone slash um, sandstone colours, it's 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 one of those. But I mean, you could I could have done creamy sort of coloured rocks, which would have been nice with the red roof. Yeah. Um, I could have done a grey sort of uh, stony sort of rocks with a nice slate blue roof. Um, and again, mythical world, you could do pink rocks and you could have an orange roof or something crazy like that. It's it's, it's whatever you fancy, really. But um, It could have been a magic well. It could have been a magic well with lots of strange stuff around it. But but this is what I really enjoy. This, this whole doing the wet blending and then doing the cream edging around these lovely browns and, and oranges. I think this sort of projects are really cool just to break up, you know, the painting painting of, armies, of painting armies, yeah. miniatures. You know, it's it's just nice and relaxing just to throw some colors in and see, you know, what the effect will be right at the end. Um, and the beauty of it is that you can be quite careless with, you know, where the colors yeah. go because, you know, the randomness of colors on the swell make it. A lot more natural. Yeah, it's, it's a job that's nice to be messy with, and you know, what as I'm doing this, I'm experimenting, you know, because I don't know how I want the finished piece to look. So I'm putting a bit more cream in some areas and going, you know, shall I do the rocks really cream coloured or? And then I decide no, so I wipe it off with my finger and I start to go right. No, no, back to brown, more sensible, and. <laughs> <laughs> And, and and this is this is the, the the path that you all get to take with this sort of thing, and it's it's a really nice little project to do. Is 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 painting a little well like this? It's a nice bit of scenery, and uh, it's a good size as well. It's it's a nice way of practicing that wet blending uh, yes. method, and you know, trying to do a lot of different edging uh, around the stones and the wood uh, places as well. So, you know, while I'm looking at this, I'm thinking there's lots of cracks between those rocks. You know, am I going to start putting moss in places? So, and later we do. But, um, you know, you could sort of think at that point, where are, the, where are the places? Where are the nooks and crannies that the moss is going to start coming from? Where is the mould going to be on this piece? Uh, so you can put a bit of green in places. You can also come back later and, and wash some blues and greens over the stones to to make them look a bit more um, like they've deteriorated or become heavily affected by the uh, elements. And uh, now we're doing a bit of what we did before, putting down all the dark browns first. It, it really is the darkest ready browns we can find, throwing oranges on it and then throwing creams on it in places. And, and you know, you, whether the job is small or big, it's the same rule across the board for all of it. Um, throwing some nice greens in there as well. Ooh. And the part in the middle there is the part that the rope would go around to lower the bucket in. Yes. Um, so later I did that as a sort of iron sort of thingy. Um, so I have a question for you. You know when you do uh, a lot of wet blending, yep. how many do you do you uh, decide the maximum amount of colors you throw in, or so that they, you know, so that you don't lose, you know, for example, some of the oranges or some of the greens, for example, because well, I mean, on a, on a thing this big, it's, it's three or four, isn't it? Yeah. And the wet blending. You know, there I put some blue in. I put some blue in there as well, which was probably stick it on scale green. Um, 
Web blending only does so much because it dries and it goes quite dark and it goes very close to, you know, what it was when it was primed. But it helps you map out what the piece is going to be. Yeah. So it's it, you know if if this was going to be a, a, a rainbow light show and I was going to put loads and loads of colours all over it, then I could do. Um, but as I was sort of going for oldy worldy um, look, then it was it was more picking picking a nice orange that it would meet up with well later and and remember I've still got to do all the edging with the cream yes yeah and I'll probably put some light brown over the wood afterwards as well once it's all dried to bring up the tone of the brown a little bit but it will just have a few little aftertones in there and that will make it all look quite nice when it's finished so that's the idea with that and there's a little picture of the finished piece again oh teasers teasers and as you can see, all this lovely um, detail around the side here, that lovely knot. Well, there's two of them there. And it's just, it's just a nice, relaxing piece to do. And you can see that just putting the edging in there pretty much completes it straight away, really. Yeah. I must say that for me, watching how edging is done is uh, it's quite satisfying to to look at. Sometimes it's nicer to watch than to do. Yes, it just looks so easy. It does. You know, and and you do it quite fast over here with just you know just doing the lines very quickly. Well, I mean, you, you're calling me out there, but basically that's because the, the, the speed of the video is sped up by like 10%, <laughs> so that this video no, doesn't but, take an no, hour to but, watch. <laughs> but it, but it's, still, it's still fairly fast, you know, it's, yeah. some people would just go with the lines really, really slow. No, yeah, I, and... I'm, I'm a bit more messy, I do tend to, to go quite quick over this, but, but it, the detail is so deep that it's, it's really not hard to, to keep your brush in the groove. So how um, how wet is your brush um, to just you know to try and keep that color on the brush and and be able to paint those lines? It's kept at a constant level of moist. Right. And so this is all we're using paint from a wet palette here. You can see the little princess dice in the background there. Hey. Um, we're using a wet palette that's off screen and. The brush is kept wet most of the time, but not really wet. If it, if it was too wet, then it, you'd see a droplet of water on the edge of the brush and you'd see this pooling a lot. Yeah. But as you can see, it's quite dry. So either the paint has been on my wet palette for a day or I'm, I'm pretty much using neat paint. Neat paint, yeah, yeah that's what close. I was getting at. It is, so. it is close to that, yeah. Yeah. But the, the brush itself, the bristles are kept wet enough for it to flow nicely. Um, But yeah, we, we I covered the whole thing, even areas that were going to be covered because it's one of those. I, I, I just like the detail being there, and it was a nice piece to paint, so it, w it, w it didn't feel like work, you know. No, we, we've just decided that actually we would stick the roof onto the yes. rafters. Yeah, the roof was left off, but Evelina has just had the executive decision. To, to, to I mean, I just it picked it up by the roof, guys, you know, and I was like, oh, it's going into pieces. No, yeah. no, no, let's just stick it on. <laughs> but but it, it's... It, the thing that's quite nice about this sort of well is that the bottom is left open to you. So if you wanted to do a tentacle coming out of there, or if you wanted to do some resin green water inside of it, you could do. To make it look like, if you wanted to do like a nurglish sort of well, you could make that happen. With yes, because this, this is a, a great base piece for that. And if you wanted to do just just generally a really sort of dark scene where you're doing a diorama and this well is on the top of the diorama and there's a hole that goes all the way down through the diorama and there's a little light at the bottom with a crystal or something, then then this is a piece that you could do that with as well. Which is kind of nice. I mean, you could even do like a little water effect inside yes. the well, and you know, and just and just play with that a little bit. And because see a lot of wells it... 
they've already got a plastic base put on them. Whereas this one doesn't. This has got a hole. This has got a hole, yeah. So that gives you options. This side, yeah. But you can see that the, the paint is starting to set a bit more. If you look at the wood, look at the stone, you can see it's all gone a bit darker now at this point. And it's starting to form more natural looking colours. And while I'm still doing the, the millions of Lines. sides of edging, um, everything is starting to, to come together quite nicely with all of that. Yes. How would you have painted this? Do you think? I mean, I. Because um... you could go with you could go with a purple roof and and purple roof, purple roof, and like a white wood, like um, if if you wanted. As, and here's me now adding literally adding more color, adding a, an orangey brown to bring up mid tones in places. I mean, I would, for example, for the stone, I tend to go for grey stones with a bit of like green mossy which areas. I think a lot of people do I think that's the main um, the main colors people would pick probably yeah but I find using grays in general quite difficult for some reason I don't know why what this is maybe I it's I just don't tend to paint many gray do you mean things. that like when you're doing that it either goes really black or really light. Yeah. You, you struggle to get it in between. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's you know I think going for like browns is definitely nicer and a, a little bit easier way of you know going about the stone. Mm -hmm. um, with wood, I tend to throw in a bit of ready browns as well sometimes. Yeah. Um, so I, when I do wood, I, I usually throw in at least three, two, four, sometimes even five different colors mm -hmm. just to, you know, just to show, you know, different, you know, how, how wood aged differently in yeah. many places. So I, I enjoy doing that um, quite a lot. But you, you can see how the orange is fitting in quite nicely on the wood. Yeah, And yeah. later I'll add green to it as well to make it look a bit more, bit more mouldy. Yeah. With the roof, I think, I, I don't know what I would do. I, I would probably do something like red tiles, uh, slates. Mm -hmm. um, that, that would be sort of like my go-to yeah. colours. Um, but so that's that's what I'm saying. It's quite nice to see the green, the green roof tiles. Yeah. Um, to you know, it, it's just you know I I imagine this this well sitting somewhere like in the middle of the woods. I don't know why, but for some reason, mm -hmm. you know, it, it could be a hidden well that sometimes travelers would use for, um, you know, to refresh themselves mm -hmm. a little bit. It it is it might be a bit of you know a bit strange place to to place a well, but I think the thing about this well is it looks rather well constructed. Yes. So I think if I saw that in the middle of the woods, I'd be quite nervous. You you wouldn't you wouldn't try and drink water think, out of it. No, I think either you've got to have a lot of faith that it's going to be the best drink ever and that it's a well cared for well in the middle of nowhere, or it's it's been purposely put there. Uh, it's gonna be poisonous for ominous purposes. <laughs> um, you can see with the cream here, it brings out all the differences in the browns that were previously there, which is really nice. So you've got like a really ready brown on the brick underneath the one I'm painting at the moment, and you know, on the same brick, you've still got sort of like greys and dark brown colours there. So it's all looking really good for stonework. This is I like doing this. I like doing the edging on rocks. Mm -hmm. And picking out all the little light higher points. That that for me, that's good fun. And the fact that you know there is actually really nice definition on those rocks, and you can see you can see the holes in you know in the in the stonework. So it's it's just it's just nice and easy to pick up those high points, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, it could, it could very easily have been grey. Mm. Yeah. A 
And then we've got the bucket as well that started to take shape. And, you know, the other, the other thing is that, you know, don't be afraid to use those lighter creams for the edging because mm -hmm. if everything is primed black just remember that your colors will will dry darker yes and over time the acrylic paint uh, cures and it cures you know a little bit darker and it just darkens down over time for you know mm -hmm. so so don't be afraid using those colors have fun because you know this is just the perfect thing to to practice a lot of edging on different things. I, we like the grim dark, and this is as, as, as light and as crazy as some of those colours might have started out. It, it's going to end up drying very grim dark and looking very looking quite ominous. Yes, yeah. Um, I mean, I've got the finished piece in front of me here, and it is it, it's nice. It is dark. Yeah, it's not the brightest no. piece in general. So, you know, you can see this paint being here quite quite bright on the edges of the stone, but in person now when when the paint cured over, you know, some time now, it's uh, it's much darker and it and it does blend in really well with with the rest of the with scenery. The rest yeah. of the scenery. So, I mean, I I could very easily do a whole city like this doing those little buildings and pavements with this sort of orangey brown rock and that would look quite nice well we've got the uh, perfect city for this we do yes yeah so um maybe one day we will see another video on on more rocks maybe <laughs> if you want to see a video on rocks say so in the comments on uh, buildings even more exciting buildings, yes. Painting yeah. windows and walls yeah. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. doing graffitis and things. You did a couple of pieces like that. Yes, yeah. If, if, if you would like to see that, guys, or if you'd prefer to see a video on rocks, then to set me the challenge of making the most awesome rocks video ever, then that, that can be done. It's, uh, it's up to you. Um, on the edge of the rafters there, you know, I, I did a bit of cream stippling. To make it look like the end of the wood. You know we see planks of wood and the end of them's all battered and beaten and yes, lighter. Yeah. Stuff like that is, is things I focused on. Um, and yeah, here I mean here is the part where I'm thinking, you know, what are we doing with the inside of this well? Are we do, are we am I creating a feature for it or am I leaving it blank for now? And what I was thinking of doing was creating a series of uh, internal slots where one of them is like a natural water disc that I put in there mm -hmm. and that looks nice and then the other one is like a nurgly corrupted inner well with bubbles and mushrooms and Ew. yeah all that sort of disease. stuff disease disease yeah and I, I could use some mossy bits to pour over the edge of the well as well to make it look worse after it's been corrupted um, or you could do a zinchian pinkish water yeah. that travelers are coming hit here to to say oh our lord of zinch no. lord of change no. please listen to our no. prayers and then so. they will do a ritual they will do a ritual guys like you know where they drink the water and they sing more prayers and all of the sudden, the Lord of Change is coming over and it could you know, pull change, a bird out of the well. Yeah, changes their lives forever. Maybe, maybe. I think it's quite nice how things like the metal dried. So a lot, you know, the handles on the metal look really sort of rusted and brown. Um, so I've got another cool. idea. Yeah. Oh, how about having a, a well? Where some goblins are jumping in to have a have, have a, a bath. little bath, like, like a little goblin sauna. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, can do. Or a dwarf sauna. Dwarf sauna. Yeah, yeah, your fire slayers. I think they could be. They could. It could be the thing where he just he just jumps in there, you know. Yeah. But I think wells are meant to be quite deep. I know, but but then you've got the bucket. You know, yeah. you can lower yourself and do the business. Yeah, and then we wouldn't come be able to have up. them resting their arms on the side of it, though. No, it no. It wouldn't be like a hot tub. No, it wouldn't be like Sadly. a hot tub. No. Um, 
I think I think if the wood wasn't on the side of it, if the wooden frame was gone, you could have a hot tub for goblins and dwarves. Oh, that there's an idea. There is an idea, yeah. So we'd have to chop it off before the before the um the the arms start to branch out of it, but um but yeah. There's a lot of detail on this piece, guys. There's a, there's a lot of um, dents and dips, which is really nice on all of the stonework there. So uh, if any of you pick this up, you'll have a lot of fun with it. So just do do use those, di you know, those dips, those little holes in the piece, you know, because that gives Enjoy you, them. yeah, that gives you perfect um, area to to just do this edging and you know making sure you you highlight things like that and the same you know the same rules will go for when you paint your bases mm -hmm. where you've got sometimes you will have a little bit of cobblestone hidden around you know in a dirt or something like that so this is the same thing you would you would edge highlight with some creams you know if your bases are similar colors to to this well but it fits in with all of our bases because we finished yes. the bases by edge uh, highlighting with zandu dust so well. so you know you can you can use this tutorial for just you know highlighting your bases and how you know how colors would blend in all together on on your bases so mm -hmm. i think it's you know it's important and a lot of people don't pay attention to the bases um a lot of the time you know sometimes you know we see bases that are just one color and you know maybe a little bit of edging but it's nice to throw in a lot more colors in and finish it off with nice cream edging um, there's a picture of the moss in the middle of the well so now for the moss oh pva glue which is our staple go-to glue for everything everything uh, basing and mossy and just dabbling a bit of that in there so on the PVA glue, you you leave it over time a little bit, so it's more tacky than. I leave the lid off the PVA glue pot. I leave yes. it off for a day or two to make it a bit less watery. Yes. And th that gives you a, a nicer sort of thickness with the glue. Um, and it just doesn't run over everything. Well, yeah, yeah. It's it's just it just works a little bit better for me. Uh, so you can see here, I'm putting the glue in places where where water could possibly seep up through or spill over on. Uh, we're using some serious play. I think it's Autumn Scatter. So I'll put the link to that in the in the uh, description as well. So that was nice. I you know, I wasn't sure I was going to use the AK Moss at first, but I put that scatter on. It was good. It's good for sort of creating a sort of dead fungally effect. Like I use it on my Nurgle basis for that reason. But I decided, you know what, we do need that moss on as well. So yes. So then we, I add more PVA glue on, and I'll, I'll mix the two products together, and it will it will give me what I want then. I mean, it's you know having those two together, it just gives you a bit more texture because yeah. the AK uh, moss is a little bit, you know, it's more fine rather than the serious play scatter. Mm -hmm. So I think it just adds to it to, you know, to create that um, depth in the, in, in, in the piece. I can't remember, I think I put some in the bucket as well. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really glouting the glue on here to make sure that we, we, we really add a bit of life to this here. So here's the AK Interactive Moss. You can see it's very one tone and it, um, it it's very sort of mid-tone green like an emerald green um, so after I'm after I let this dry I do go back over and paint it and I add this moss to the roof slates to, to this and to the bucket as well and I also add it to the, the lid for the well and we do the same thing with all of them we you know, add a bit of the autumn leaf scatter from Serious Play and add a bit of the AK Interactive Moss. And this year I've, I've added a bit too much PVA glue on, so I've wet my brush, I've cleaned it off, and I've taken off the PVA glue that I don't want there because I only want a little bit of moss in there. You know, the, the bucket itself wouldn't be completely. Yes, it's 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 always in use, isn't it? Yeah. So it's, you know, if, it, if the bucket was left there for 
many many years then then yes there would be a lot more moss in, in I it. can see occasionally people leaving the bucket full of water but you know it would only be for like a few days here or there so I think it would only have a small level of moss built up but it would sort of seep through those cracks and it would work around the metalwork there quite nicely so it was it was good fun to do it and then we go on to the rafters it was gonna you know, it's gonna be raining on this a lot there's gonna be a lot of you know it's gonna it's gonna have a bit of organic life there because there's, there's you know there's wood there as well which is gonna get damp and it's gonna be in the little cracks there so I'm putting the glue on and I'm rubbing the excess off of my finger so that uh, we only have moss in the cracks and don't be afraid PVA glue it it dries transparent so yes. it, it will be all fine when it all when it all dries in the end it has the tiniest sort of shiny effect mm. but if you cover it with stuff you don't tend to really see it so as uh, we we're very sort of hesitant to use anything that gli that dries shiny, shiny. or glossy yes. and um, this is at the most minimal level it, it's it's very very hard to really see that but yeah so we let those we we let those two dry now I'm doing the lid Do you think you'd like that you'd enjoy this little project yourself? I, th I think because I would. I'm, I'm seeing you looking at it as if I'm like my, my eyes are shining here, yeah. guys. I'm just like, oh, this is cool. It is a nice little project, and I think doing more little scenery pieces like this makes makes the week more interesting. It can get quite, you know, a lot of people talk about artist burnout. Now we don't do that. We don't burn out. We just constantly change up what we're painting. Yes. Um, Even when we're stuck on one project, on one big project, it's it's important to just change over to you know something a little bit different to mm -hmm. uh, to break it up a little bit. So here I'm I'm using a lighter green over the moss to try and make it look a bit more alive. Because when you look at moss, it's quite bright in real life, and that one was quite dark. So you can I mean depending on what you want. Yes. Depending on what you want from your moss, you can you can paint it however you like. You could have painted it red if you wanted, um, but it is. I mean, essentially, what you get from the AK product is it's the perfect sort of texture. Yes. And then, you know, we paint our grass, we paint our flowers sometimes, and there's no excuse for you to not paint your moss. So it adds that extra level to it, makes it look a bit more natural. And it does dry darker, so so the green that I put on wasn't that bright in the end. No. So yes, I think maybe next time I should paint some fences. You're gonna grab some fences. Some stone fences and we walls. We do still have some stone fences to paint. So um, that'll be that'll be really cool. But yeah. There you go. That's the finished product. Pretty much. And here is a little video of it after everything had dried and set and we'd done all the last few, you know, if, if there was any touch-ups I noticed, I did them, any bits I hadn't painted. Isn't that beautiful? That looks beautiful. A fine piece for anyone's D&D &D games or an objective to fight over in anything like Warcry or Age of Sigma or um, if you play Frostgrave you could make a snowy one. Which should be cool. So, guys, let us know if you find it useful. Let us know if it helps you paint wood. Let us know if it helps you paint stone. And let us know if you decide to order one. Um, all that good stuff. And if you want a video on rocks, let me know. Yes. <laughs> but there you go. I think the wood turned out well. It's got nice wear yeah, and tear. Yeah, it does. It does, doesn't it? I think the moss turned out well. It looks, it looks lived. It looks like it's alive. It does. The roof looks fantastic. Yeah, we put more brown on the roof to bring that out a bit more, make it look a bit more old. Um, and there you go, everyone. Enjoy. Hope you enjoyed the video. Enjoy, enjoy. See you soon, guys. Take care, guys. Bye.